Sweet. So I basically spend like all my days, all the time, in IPython notebook and pandas. So my goal here is to convince you that you should also be spending all your time there while you're analyzing data. <laughs> um, it's acceptable for you to not be there at other times. Um, so IPython notebook is a web-based interface for using Python. Um, so basically, you're in your web browser, and you type Python code, and it executes, and then you have pretty graphs. And you can do like literate programming, where you have um, markdown and then some graphs. And you can tell a story, which is what I'm going to be doing here. Um, I made this slideshow in IPython Notebook. Oh, god. What's going on? <laughs> OK, that went away. Maybe it won't come back. Um, and you can also version control your IPython notebook and do science, where you're like version one, version two, where I didn't make a mistake and that doesn't happen to me ever. Um, so pandas is a data analysis. It provides data structures and useful helper functions um, for Python. It's a little bit like R for Python. If you've ever used R, if you haven't, that's okay. Um, Python is much more fun to write. Um, even though R is a fantastic tool um, for programming, Python is better. Um, and it's really fast. So I'm going to be showing you a very small data set um, and walk you through that. But you can use huge things. You can use uh, data sets that don't fit in memory and are just on the disk. Um, it's backed by NumPy. And you can use it with scikit-learn, do some machine learning, uh, predict the future. It's great. Um, when you're installing this stuff, these tools are evolving really rapidly. Um, so don't use the Ubuntu packages. Um, install them using pip. Like IPython 1.0 was came out like yesterday or something, so it's not there. Um, or use Anaconda, which is a fantastic scientific Python distribution um, by the people at Continuum Analytics, and it's free. And I don't work for them or anything, but I love it. Um, especially if you're on Windows, like getting all this stuff set up and C Python compiled is a so much work. Anaconda is super easy. Um, it, so when you want to start IPython Notebook, you want to run a command like this. Uh, dash dash pylab inline just imports a bunch of stuff, and it makes your graphs display inline instead of in like a special pop-up window. Um, and the data set I'm going to be talking about is from the Montreal Open Data website. Um, this website is in French, but I told you where to go. You can deal with it, I hope. Um, and it has the number of people on each of seven bike paths every day. So there's a sensor on each, each bike path, and it records like there are 3,000 people on this bike path today, um, not in the winter. Uh, so the first thing we need to do when dealing with a new data set is to import it, right? Um, so you import pandas, and then you read CSV, 2012.csv. And you get this, which is kind of a disaster, right? Like we have encoding problems, we have the wrong separators, everything is wrong. Luckily, this function is actually awesome, and you can say, "That's the encoding. This is the separator. I want like a, to, I want you to parse all my dates, and I want you to parse them right." And you get, as a result, this data structure, um, which we call a data frame. Um, so if you use used R, this is a little bit like an R data frame. Um, if you haven't used R, you can think of it like a database table. There's rows, there's columns, that's it. It's pretty simple, right? Um, so we have one row for each day of the year. And here we have three bike paths. And you can see, like, on January 1st, there were 38 people who went on the Maison of one bike path. Um, so this is sort of cool, but not super useful. Um, and so the first thing I normally do is I look at it, right? Um, and then I plot it, which you can do by doing bike data dot plot. Uh, pretty simple. So we can see that in January and February and March, there's not that many people because it's minus 20 degrees. Um, <laughs> but Montreal bikers are really dedicated, so there are some. Um, and then it becomes the summer, and lots of people go out biking, and it's November, and not so much anymore. This is great. Um, so. I want to do some analysis on this, though. I want to know why. Like, why? I mean, I know it's increasing because it's the summer, but like, what, what's the reason for that spike in March, for example? Like, what happened there, right? Um, so the first thing I thought was that there's some natural variation. Like, so there's a, the median of the median number of people on different bike paths. So I was like, which one is the best one? So I got the, all the medians. 
but then I wanted to plot it, so I did like median.plot. That was easy. We can do better. Um, so the next thing I, I wanted to know was like, are weekdays or weekends better? So the first thing we need to do to do this is get a weekday column in our data frame. So Pandas makes this super easy for us because if you do bike data dot index, so index is the date is that date thing on the side, dot weekday, it'll give you a number for each weekday. Um, and you can make a new column, kind of like adding something to a dictionary, um, and then look at the beginning of the data frame. Um, so this is fantastic. And then we can group the data by weekday. And if you've done SQL, it's kind of like that. Like you do group by, and then you add up all the numbers. Um, you could also put any function you want in your aggregation. And you could like just take the first three and average them, or whatever weird thing you want to do. Um, so we get this, but this is a table, and it kind of sucks. And I don't understand what that means. So instead, I do a graph. And we find out that people go biking in the week, and then not so much on the weekend. So that's cool. That's something. But th that, that doesn't explain like everything here, right? Like that, that sort of it looks like it might explain what's going on in January and February and March, maybe, because that looks a bit like seasonal, like could be a weekday weekend thing. Um, like people are biking during the week because they have to, and it's the winter, and like they're serious, but no one goes out biking for fun on the weekend. Like maybe that's what's going on. We could check. Um, but in the summer, that, that's not explaining anything. Um, so the next thing I did was I was like, I can get some weather data. So I wrote a get weather data function that downloads some stuff from weather.gc.ca. And you don't have to read this. Don't worry. Um, but the point is that it was pretty easy. Um, and I, I was like, here's my URL, and like read CSV from that URL, right? And it'll download it and parse it and do everything for me and like skip the first 16 rows because that's some extra metadata that I don't care about and parse my dates and do all kinds of magic. So I got my weather data. And then, so the first thing, I, I don't really know. I'm not like a meteorologist. Um, and I don't really understand what to make of humidity. Like I don't know if cyclists really care how humid it is exactly. Um, but people definitely care about the temperature, right? So, but we have a problem, which is that we have the temperature every hour and not every day. That's just too often, which is a good problem to have. It's way better than not often enough. Um, so Pandas was ori originally written to do financial data analysis, um, which is also why it's really fast, because um, you have tons of numbers about stocks. Um, and what that means is it has really great uh, methods to resample stuff. So I can say, instead of having this every day, I want every hour, and I want you to take the average. And that's one line of code, right? So you say, bike data, mean temperature, weather data, every day, take the mean, and I'm done. And if, I, if we graph this, we get this super fantastic plot where over here, you see that in March, it got like super warm, and then everyone was really excited, and they went out biking, and then it got cold again, and everyone was like, oh, no, never mind. And then April kind of got like warm again, and people were like, wow, and then, like, and then the summer it was warm, and everyone was biking, and that was fine. But th this, because I remember this, it was really nice. And I was on vacation, and I was angry, because it was like 25 degrees in March. <laughs> like, not OK. Um, <laughs> So, so this is a good story, right, in this graph. Um, but then, like, there's all this variation in the summer here, right? And, th and this is not because, like, it went, the temperature went down a little bit, right? This is probably because it was raining. Um, that, that's my feeling. So I went out to try to verify this. Um, so what I did was I wrote, like, this really long one-line thing where I was like, weather data, weather, does it contain rain? If so... Um, also, you'll notice I wrote lambda x into x when I could write int. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> that's a mistake. But it's worse than a mistake. Like, it's dumb, but it also makes your code way slower because Pandas knows how to like, aggregate uh, int, and it'll make it fast for you. But if you have a lambda, it'll be slow. 
um, and you can make your code like 20 times faster just by not doing dumb stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> so this is a lesson. I left that in on purpose, I promise. Um, and then you, I can resample that every day and take the mean. And what that means is I get the percentage of the day when it was raining. So here we go. Um, in July, here it was raining, right? This was a rainy day. And there is a dip here. And I bet that's because it was raining. And this, you kind of see the same thing here, kind of. Like, I don't know if you believe me, but I feel, I feel convinced that people also, because I already know that I don't go biking when it's raining. But there's something going on here. But it's not very clear. Um, so I looked at some unpopular days. Uh, so you can be like, when, when you're indexing, you can do all kinds of things. You can be like the first five columns, or you can just be like, I want everything from May to September, and it'll understand. Like, it's just fantastic. <laughs> and then I can be like, I want everything that's, tell me which ones are less than 2,500. And then you can do some indexing magic, and you get a list of all of the rows where the number of bikers was less than 2,500. And surprise, on all of those days it was raining, at least a little bit. So that's something. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I've convinced you, but I believe it. So, some advice. Um, the documentation is really good. There's a lot of it. There's like 500 pages of it. Um, but you should read a little bit of it, because every time I read it, I'm like, oh, wow, there's like some basic functionality that I didn't realize, and it's really useful, and that would have saved me several hours. So read a little bit of it. Um, there's a book by Wes McKinney called Python for Data Analysis, which is fantastic. And uh, always use vectorized operations. Like, don't write loops over your data frames or NumPy arrays, because it'll be like 50 times slower. And if you're trying to, I mean, if you have like 300 rows of data, it doesn't matter. But vectorize your operations. And that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah, if anyone has questions, hold up your hand. I'll bring a microphone to you. And uh... oh. yeah, sorry, not not so much a question. I just wanted to invite. Uh, you mentioned the boffs that are happening. There is an open data boff uh, this evening at uh, seven for anybody that wants to come uh, talk open data. Uh, but that was a great presentation. Thank you very much. Um, so does is Panda useful without this uh, IPython notebook thing? Or, yeah. Uh, so the graphs will be generated some other way, or? Yeah, yeah. Like for example, you can write the graph to a file. You could write it to like a PNG or an SVG. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely possible. It would have been nice to be able to see like in a graph form to see that rainy days are like. People don't like biking those days. That's true. You Could can you totally download this and do it yourself if you want. No, I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know how, but you like pandas and I find that notebook. How would you have done that? How would I do that? Right. Um, how would I see that rainy days? Um, so I would probably, well, I would start by just like looking at the median number of bikers on, on across rainy days and then across, um, I could plot bikers versus raininess. I would plot bikers versus raininess. Yeah, to start. <laughs> what? I would do a scatter plot exactly and see how that was. Uh, sorry, I missed the first few minutes of the talk. What's the res resolution of the of the bike data? Is it collected in like fifteen minute chunks or one hour chunks? Daily. Or daily. Okay. Yeah. So it wouldn't be possible to do something like hourly, no. you know, if it rains that hour, because you have temperature data per mm. hour, things yeah. like that. And I'm sure they collect it. Like, I'm sure they have right. the raw sensor data, which is like someone was there at 9.54.32 a.m., right. right? Right. But if you petition the city of Montreal, maybe they'll give it to us. <laughs> no, that would be cool. I know uh, in Ottawa, they give it to us in 15-minute intervals, okay. so that's, that's nice. Yeah, but, we're behind uh, in Montreal. In, uh, uh, the other question is, is does Panda have... Uh, well, I guess uh, you could just do it with uh, NumPy, but uh, did you think about doing correlations of that? Because you, know, you could, mm -hmm. those graphs look pretty well correlated. Yeah. It would be nice to see a number of 
Uh, yeah, like if you look at the correlations between yeah. the different bike paths, it's really high. It's like 90, 90 something percent. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, you can okay. definitely do that in pandas. Thanks, thanks. Yeah. Um, what kind of performance hit do you take when doing this in IPython notebook as opposed to doing it with pandas without IPython notebook? None. So I can imagine, you know, having a small data set like that to make sure you're running the right queries and then running the giant one itself. Yeah. There's no performance hit from using IPython uh, notebook. It just, you have a Python process running and that's it. Yeah. Um, the pandas data frame data structure was there a particular reason you used it as opposed to just NumPy, like arrays? Um, I find it really convenient because you can you can sort of package arrays together, mm -hmm. um, and you have all this like like pandas has all these different slicing operations you can do. So you can say like like this thing I did where I was like September to like September to uh, May to September, right? You can't do that in NumPy. That's something that pandas has kind of added onto NumPy. Yeah. So pandas is like NumPy with extra magic, and I find the extra magic really useful, basically all the time. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask, when you resampled using the mean, um, it looked like the mean is just a function that you can pass in. Could you yeah. write your own custom function that says like over a certain period of time or something? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's it's pretty simple. Um, you make an IPython notebook. You need to use IPython 1.0, um, and then you click like slideshow. Maybe I can show you. I don't know if it's possible. It's probably a mistake. But I can show you what it looks like if I can. Is, do I have an extra character there? Yeah. So this is my uh, IPython notebook that I was working on if this will ever open for me. Yeah, so I wrote this, and I did some computations, and I changed things around, I drew some graphs, and I edited it until I was done. And then I just uh, compiled it into a presentation. Yeah, so that's what IPython notebook looks like when you're using it. That is really cool. I want my slides to be that awesome. <laughs> um,